Come on, anybody know that God is real? Come on, do anybody know that God is real? I need you right now in the comment section to declare God is real. Amen. It's a simple song to say. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I cannot go. But I am sure of this one thing that God is real for I can feel him here in my soul yes God is, yes, God is real. oh Lord he's real in my soul Oh, yes, God is real. It made me whole. Come on, has he watched anybody? Come on, say, his love for me. Tell somebody, just like we're gone. Tell somebody, yes, God is real. For I can feel. Oh Lord, I'm hearing my soul. Can I tell you one more time? Said there are some things that I may not know, and there are some play says I cannot go. Hey. But I am sure. Anybody sure this morning? Come on, y'all. Of this one thing. Tell somebody. That God is real. For I can feel him here in my soul. Mm -hmm. Yes, God is. Oh, Lord, he's real in my soul. Tell somebody, say yes, God is real. Tell somebody, and made me whole. I want you to tell somebody in the comment section, say his love for me. Tell him it's just like pure gold. It's just like pure gold. Tell somebody for me, tell him, say yes, God is real. For I can feel him here in my soul. Luke's gospel we're going to today. Come on. Say yes, God is. We're going to Luke's gospel, the 15th chapter, 11 verse. He's real in my soul. Oh, yes, God is real. It made me whole. Come on, I want you to raise your voices around your household. Say his love for me. Tell them, says just like we're gold, it's been refined. Yes, God is real. Oh, I can feel Him here in my soul. Luke's Gospel, the 15th chapter, 11 verse. And he said, A certain man, it's on your screen even now. He said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portions of good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Verse 13 says, And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey. Tell your neighbor, say, go after it. If that neighbor don't respond to her, to another neighbor, say, go after it. Verse 13 says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey. He took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance without, without of controlling living, a controlled living. Without of controlled living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he begun to be in one. Master, Savior, Redeemer, and King. 
God, it is me, your humble servant, coming now, asking, oh God, that you would guide my lips, guide my tongue, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted when thy sight, oh Lord, you are my strength, you are my rock and my redeemer. Keep me down, oh God, at this hour that I would not stray away from that which you have called me here today to do. But God, I pray that the word you give me for this house and for your people, that it fall on good grounds and bring forth much fruit. Is it the matchless name of Jesus? I do pray all of God's children shout it out. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I want to begin this two week, I want to begin this two week sermon series this morning by saying that we've got to get back to the word of God. I want to say that. I told us on group therapy, I said, we're going to get back to the word of God. We've got to get back to the word of God. Feeding ourselves and letting the pastor come along and confirm the word you've been studying. Amen. The word of God is so much richer, watch this, when it is confirmation down in your soul. The word of God is much richer. Tell your neighbor, say, the word of God is, much, is so much richer when it is confirmation down in your soul. And I think it's very revelation to come from the pulpit without something being birthed down in your spirit. Y'all ain't going to say no amens. I think it's a very dangerous thing. I think it's a very dangerous thing that the only confirmation that comes to you is only through the pulpit. God bless you. Amen. When Jesus begins to minister to this particular instance, he ministers a parable, not just a Bible story. Luke. The 15th chapter, the 11th verse, Jesus now tells a parable. And he begins to minister in this particular instance. He's ministering, watch this, a parable and not just a Bible story. Not, not just a Sunday school lesson. Not just a class for those who would like to be enriched with a concept or philosophy or theological dissertation. But he speaks to us that we might be able to extract a story principle for godly living. Principle, it's not, watch this, enough to have the storyline and the continuity. Everybody say continuity. continuity. It, it is not enough to have the storyline and the continuity of the text if you cannot draw from the knowledge of the text, the wisdom of the text. In fact, it is actually the wisdom of the text that comes applicable from your own life. Let me say this to you. Without wisdom, you are just full of information. You hear that? Without any wisdom, you're just full of information, but you have no revelation to apply the information that you have now collected. And so when Jesus speaks to us, he speaks to us about a certain man who had two sons. In the 11th verse, y'all, and a certain man had two sons. I believe that's what he said. A certain man has two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portions of good that falls to me. So now the Bible says that he divided unto him his living. One of them asked for it, but both of them got it. That, that, that's, all, that's, all, that's all by itself. That's all by itself. Both, one of them asked for it, but both of them now got it. That's all by itself. Our problem, y'all, is we become so preoccupied with the flaws and the failures and the philosophy, philosophies of the younger son, watch this, that we fail to appreciate the struggles of the elder son. All right. It, it is, watch this now, it is now indicative of all of a spiritual disease that is eating up the mentality of the church. Because we are so involved in dealing with obvious sins that we never start dealing with the not obvious abstracts sins that we are being that are being perfected in respect to habits and things we used to do that we no longer do. Amen. Stick with me. I'm getting ready to take you somewhere. There are still a whole generation. Somebody say a whole generation. There is still a whole generation of sins that are clustered in the crevices of our heart that are that go unchecked because nobody deals with sins of the spirit. But in 2 Corinthians 7 and 1, it tells us, in fact, it challenges us, watch this, saying, having therefore these precious promises, no doubt about it, y'all, we do have them. It, it, it's given to us by what? By grace. 
It, it doesn't withhold the promises on, on the basis of our integrity or our spiritual development. Look at this, y'all. The, the promise that has been allocated, everybody shout allocated. You, you mean to tell me that this morning I woke up to allocated blessings. And so the promise has now been allocated, having therefore these precious promises. I want you to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I got precious promises. And so, so now he says, watch this, the promise, watch this, has been now allocated, having therefore these precious promises. I want you to tell somebody once again, when I woke up this morning, I woke up and I walk into allocated precious promises if you are down on your luck if you are down in your spirit I need you to uplift your spirit by telling yourself I woke up this morning and I'm walking into the promise of allocated blessing he has divided blessings upon me and therefore I am grateful having therefore these precious promises let us cleanse ourselves now from the filthiness of the flesh and the spirit all right. In other words, in other words, in other words, he's now saying since God is going to give you so much, I want to tell you something. He said, because God has now allocated to you so much, he said, because God has now given you these precious promises. In other words, y'all, he's saying since God is going to give you so much, tell your neighbor, God is going to give you so much. He said, because God is going to give you so much, and he's already told you what he's going to do in your life. Wait a minute y'all ain't praising him he's already told you what he's gonna do in your life jeremiah 29 11 said i know the thoughts that you have for me say of the lord y'all y'all gonna preach and so he's already told you what he's gonna do in your life then least the least thing you can do is prepare your heart and your life so that you are ready to receive what god has for you i need somebody to say it down in your spirit and say i'm ready to receive what god has for me Look at somebody and tell them, say, God got something for me. God got something for me. God got something for me. And so, you know what? Let me say this. You know what? Let me say this. Let me say this. You have to now drive to work. I want to tell you, because these blessings, watch this, these precious blessings, these precious promises. Here it is. Uh-huh. Here it is. You have to now drive to work. Telling yourself where I am isn't as important as where I'm going. All right, y'all see that? Because if you don't keep that in your life, you'll become distracted by the noise and, and, the, and the comfort of winds and distractions, adversities and traumas will cause you to look to this or that and you will spend all of your energy trying to deal with something that you're going to pass through anyway. Y'all God I ain't going to say no amens up in here see, see what's going to happen is uh, if you don't take this spirit with you and saying that God has promised me that he's going to do something for me that eyes have not seen, he is have not heard nor has it entered the heart of man what God has promised to me if you don't carry that with you you gonna end up walking around trying to deal with something that you're trying to pass through that you're gonna pass through anyway and you know what my motto is my motto is if you can't fix it outlive it won't you tell your neighbor say neighbor if you can't fix it go ahead and outlive it I'm trying to preach by myself tell your neighbor say neighbor if you can't fix it I'll live it because if you just keep on living I wish y'all would help me preach up in here if you would just keep on living it will fall off of you after a while someone said things are going to get better after a while you don't even have to fix everything just keep on living tell your neighbor say keep on living keep on living keep on living let me break this down living now watch this living everybody shout living Living comes from understanding, Minister Charles, that you have a promise. All right. I want you to see this. Living comes from the understanding that you have a promise. Okay. And you begin, watch this, to cleanse not only the filthiness of the flesh, but the filthiness of your spirit. Y'all see this? And, and so thinking negative attitudes 
Hindering you from reaching your zenith in the spirit. Somebody say, I'm getting ready to reach my zenith in the spirit. Y'all ain't going to hear me when I say it. Every sin that easily besets you, procrastination, low self-esteem, pity, parties, mood swing, everything that's hindering you from walking into the full vesture of what God has opened up to you. I just came to preach somebody happy this morning. Tell them that you have to understand that living is having a promise. Is there any anybody that said my living is in my promise yeah. I, I did not die because I got a promise I did not die because there's a dream in my belly I did not die because there's purpose on me somebody said there is purpose in my life hey. so now 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 God has something for you be seated I'm getting ready to work this thing now God has something for you and he brought you here to this church today under this pastor to analyze, to draw to you, and to pull you in. Let me tell you again. God has something for you. I want you to say it out loud. Say, God has something for me. I'm going to say that one more time. I want you to say it on purpose. with me. Say, God has something for me. And I believe that he brought you here today to this church under this pastor to analyze you and to draw you in and to pull you in. To awaken you to re the reality that many things that you are worried about are not even important. That, that's what God is trying to tell you. He said many things that you are worried about are not even important because God is about to explode in your life. He's about to go off in your life. He's about to set your life on fire and you're worried about something that does not even matter to God. Touch somebody and tell them it does not even matter. I know they talk about you but it does not even matter. I know they left you high and dry but it does not even matter. I know they sat Avatage you, but it does not even matter. I know they maltreat you, but it does not even matter. Won't you touch on your neighbor and tell your neighbor too they believe that it does not even matter what you're upset about? Why are you mad? Why are you so angry? It does not even matter what God is getting ready to do next in your life will supersede the hell that's going on in it. Is there anybody here that say God is getting ready to overflow? and explode in my life hallelujah he said he said he said he said I know I've got it someone said I know he's got it he said I'm exposed to it but I want control of it let me work on the text for a minute put it back on the screen let me work on the text now we're in Luke's gospel the 15 chapter 11 verse let's work it out he said watch this he said this he said I know I've got it I'm talking about the younger of the prodigal son here it is he said he said he said I know I've got it I'm exposed to it, but I want control of it. This is the problem. See, see, I, I work this thing, and I try to tell people from a theological perspective that, that this younger son, he's not greedy. What he's hungry for is power. He, he, he got the money. He's been in the palace all of his life. He got more money than he can spend. He says, he says I know I've got it because I've been here. I'm exposed to it because my daddy has it. Y'all hear me? But I want control of it. I want it to be mine. Now, now he says to his father, he says, he said, I know you got it. He said, but put it under my power. Watch this. Watch this. Give me my portion. It's in the text. He said, give me my portion so I can do what I want to do, how I want to do it. He was now thirsty to get in control of his life. He, he thought he, he knew better than his father. Give it to me so I can spin it the way I want to spin it without having accountability and having to live up under your rules. He says now, and give it to me. Somebody say, give it to me. Give it to me so I can go and do my own thing when I want to do it. I have more respect for my opinion than I do your opinion. And I want to do it my way. I'm a Burger King baby. I want to have it my way. Y'all going to shout amen up in here? That, that was the problem. That was the problem. That was the problem. 
but, but in a way I came to defend him. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach now. In a way I came, yes I did. I came all the way from my house, got in my car, got dressed and came to church to defend this younger son. I came to defend him because I'm tired of people downing him. I know it doesn't look good on the surface, but the church always has a habit to pick on people who have filthiness of the flesh. Y'all, y'all ain't people, they always have a habit. I know I've done wrong, but the Bible said, if you would judge yourself, you should not be judged. I, I feel like preaching up in here. There's a reason why the church is empty. It's because people are tired of coming to church and being judged for their filthiness in the flesh. But I came to tell somebody, anytime there's a problem we can see because we have loved things that we can readily see with our eyes. Let me work this thing out now. So now, anytime, be seated, let me work this thing out. Because somebody said, what you mean, Pastor? You've taken his, you've taken his position. Let me work on this. This is why I've come to defend him. I've come to defend the younger son. Because not only did this younger son go home, and the father of the Bible says received him with a fatty calf. Oh, y'all hear me? This way I'm getting ready to defend him. So if the father can, 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 can forgive him, why can't the church? So, so my position today is I'm so tired. Somebody say I'm tired. The pastor's tired. Uh, the problem was uh, I, bec- I came to defend him because I'm tired of people downing him. I know it doesn't look good on the surface. I I know what he did was a little bit of crazy towards his father. But the church always has a habit to pick on people who have filthiness of the flesh. And anytime there's a problem we can see because uh, we see things that we can readily see with our eyes. We don't have any trouble talking about anybody or somebody who has weakness in an area. I I know I'm not excusing him. I, I am not excusing him. I'm not trying trying to excuse him at all I'm not trying to get him apart I recognize he has some real problems is there anybody say I got some real problems and so I'm not trying to excuse him I'm not trying to excuse what I done yesterday I'm not trying to excuse what I did last week because the reason I came to church is because I got some problems is there anybody in this building today who's watching online from wherever you're watching from they say I made it to the house I logged online I turned on my television because I got some problems Hallelujah. I'm not trying to promise you to all of the critics in the comment section to all of the pastors that will try to critique my message I came to tell you I'm not excusing him I'm not trying to excuse him I'm not trying to get him apart I recognize that he has some real problems he did somebody say he did he did he he got a hold now let me break it down he got a hold down the Bible says he got a hold of the wealth and couldn't handle it he got a hold of the wealth and he couldn't handle it the Bible said brother David he spent it he spent all of his stuff he spent all of his substance is what the Bible says which I believe is more than money Whoa, whoa, y'all, y'all, y'all. See, see, I came, I came to preach the truth to you. He did not just spend all of his money. The Bible says that he spent his substance. Are y'all going to help me preach up in here because I feel mm -mm good now. He did not just spend all of his money. The Bible says that he got a hold of his wealth and he could not handle it. The Bible said he spent it. He spent all all of his stuff here it is here's the word in the bible he spent all of his what substance y'all gonna work with me now y'all gonna work with me now he spent all of his substance let me work this thing y'all are happy church today he spent all of his substance which i believe now is more than just money his substance everybody shout substance your substance is more than just what you got Y'all ready? Your your substance is more than what you possess. The Bible says that he spent all of his substance. He spent his integrity. He he, he spent his self-esteem. 
He spent his affluence. Y'all going to pray with me now. Uh -huh. He spent his poise. He spent his dignity. He spent his masculinity. Uh -huh. He spent what makes him walk with his head up and his back straight. He was going to a basement. He was going down to nothing. He was being reduced to the common denominator. When, when he spent all of his substance, there arose, the Bible says, what? A famine. All right. Y'all ain't going to say no amen. So, 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 he spent all of his substance. He was going down to the basement. He was going down to nothing. He was being now reduced to the common denominator. And I want to stop and put a pin in it for a minute to tell you that the enemy knows when and how to attack you. The Bible says, watch this, uh, uh -huh, that when he spent all of his substance, that a famine hit the what? Land. The devil will only catch you when you're broke. Y'all ain't hear me when I say it. The, the, the reason why it's important to be a good stu steward is because, watch this, the devil has a way of catching you when you're broke. Uh -huh. Them bills don't hit as hard as they do when you're broke. Y'all ain't going to hear me. That food cost and what you eat and the weed that you wear and the dresses that you buy, it don't hit you until you have gone broke. Somebody going to shout amen in the building? And so now... The Bible says he was going down to nothing and the devil has a way of getting you, isolating you down to your basement. Uh-huh, uh-huh. To reduce you now to your common denominator. Uh-huh. When he spent all it all, there, there, the Bible said there arose a famine in the land speaking conditions on him. Wow. Yeah. Break it down. Somebody says speaking, speaking. conditions speaking. on him. Remember, the Bible said that he was a wealthy young man. But now, 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 when he spent all and the fame and came in the land, you are now, when you become a prisoner, y'all ain't hear me, y'all, you now become that thing that you what? That you worship. He worshiped his money. He lost his money. Now, whenever the condition speaks, now whenever famine speaks, because he no longer has money, he now becomes a part of his. That's deep. That's too deep. So now, watch this. The enemy knows he can't send a famine when you have food. It don't affect it. It, it, it don't affect you. The enemy can't send a famine when you got food. He waits until you're broke, busted, and disgusted, and then he shows up, and, and that's when your, your, your kids start acting crazy. Uh -huh. you, you, you're in a layoff, uh, uh, layoff moment and a low moment in your life, and the devil, devil knows as long as you're in the house, he can't do nothing to you. That, that, that's, why, that, that's, why, that's, why, that's why he's trying to get you out of the house. He, he, he wants you out of the house. He don't want you in your position. He don't want you on the organ. He don't want you on the drums. He don't want you behind the podium. He don't want you in the pews. He want you out of the house. Because if the devil can get you out of the house, he will use anybody to get you out of the house. Don't you fall in the basement while they're falling in the basement. Because some people don't get back up out of the basement floor. Tell somebody, thank God that I rose above my basement. Is there anybody? to say God I thank you that I rose above my basement hallelujah uh -huh. so now the devil knows as long as you're in the house he can't do nothing to you as long as you're preparing God or praising God and, and blessing God and lifting him up and clapping your hands and rejoicing to God he waits until watch this uh, you're broke busted and disgusted and watch this here it is not just this tired and defeated and at the end of your proverbial rope and then he attacks you that's the devil that's the devil for you touch three people and tell them stay in the house come on touch somebody and tell them stay in the house 
All you got to do, y'all, is stay in the house. It might not feel good, but stay in the house. Might be lonely, but stay in the house. Might not have a husband, but stay in the house. Might not have a boyfriend, but stay in the house. Might not have that wife, but stay in the house. He now attaches himself, watch this, to the people of that country and sent him to the field. I want you to see this. I'm working the text. I want you to see this. Because the young son did not stay in the house, okay. he, he, he not only lost all of his substance, the Bible says spent his substance. Okay? So now what happens is this young boy now attaches himself. You got to be careful in the season who you attach yourself to. Because when they go to the basement, you go to the basement with them. So now watch this. He attached himself to the people, watch this, the Bible says, of uh, what? That country. Uh -huh. And sent him to the field to feed the swine. And I apologize, and, I, and, and, and he, he shouldn't have done it. But I like him. Let me, let me tell you why I like him. I like him. I came to defend him. I like him. I came to defend him because he's a man of action. The same thing that made him very bad also makes him very good. I told I told y'all not going y'all not going to feel me on this a little bit. The same thing that made him very bad also makes him very good. Because he was a man of what? Action. Okay? He was not the kind of man that sat back and looked at what he wanted and didn't go after it. If, if it was it was if it was good or bad, he wanted it. And you gotta appreciate somebody that wanted it. And go after it. He went after it rather than keep trying to recycle some of the church folk. He went after it, Minister Josh. Then keep trying to recycle some of the church folk. I would rather get old sinners. That we pull out of the sewer. Because when they get saved, they go after God with passion. But when you've been in church for a long time, you become sophisticated. But I love the people that come from the slums and the ghetto. Because they come in with an urgency that I have got to get closer to Jesus. Y'all ain't hear me when I say I don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings. But I'd rather pastor some sinners. I, I'd rather pastor some folk from the strip club. I, I, I'd rather gather some people from the street corner. Because these people will help me press for Jesus. While you're trying to fix your hat and doing your nails and trying to look cute. It is that. It is the ones that come from the slums and the ghettos and the sewers, they'll lay prostrate on the floor and cry out in the Holy Ghost. I wish there was somebody that would shout, Holy Ghost, fall fresh on me because they are so glad to be in the number. Somebody said, I'm glad to be in the number. One more time, is there anybody here? They say, I'm so glad to be in the number. I'm so glad that he looked beyond my faults and he saw me at my need. I'm so glad that I'm in the number. While you're judging people for being lost, I like folk from the streets and the street corners that want it so bad that they come in the church and they get high on Jesus as if they were on crack. Uh -huh. They're so glad that God brought them out. They're so glad that God brought them through. They're so glad that God saw them over. They don't care who's looking at them. They don't care who's looking at them. Uh, when they were drunk, they say, I don't care who's looking at me. And they don't care who's looking at me now. Them folk are praying folk. Somebody said they praying folk. Because every time they get in trouble, they say, Jesus. 
I gotta go now. But have you ever got in trouble? Have you ever looked bad? And you hollered out, Jesus. You may have never said another word, but you said, oh my God. You said, Jesus. Is there anybody here that can look at somebody and say, I don't care what you think. I'm going after it. I'm going after my dreams. Whether I'm right or wrong, I'm going after it because it's in my spirit it's in my belly and I'm going after it I know I'm going to be judged because it don't look like your process looks but I'm going after it I know it looks crazy I know I'm insane by the thought I have but is there anybody here that say I'm going after it I'm going after destiny I'm going after promise I'm going after purpose I'm going after wealth I'm going after power I'm going after authority I'm going after leadership I'm going after it I'm going after entrepreneurship I'm going after it I'm going after academically I'm going after it is there anybody here I'm done I'm done I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Listen, here it is. He says, I'm going to go after it. I'm going to go after it. I, I know, I know my eldest brother, he's comfortable, he's comfortable. The most danger you can do is to sit back and never try. The, the, the most danger you can ever do to your destiny is to sit there in a comfortable position. I'm, I'm done preaching. But the worst thing you can do is never try to go after what God has placed in your heart. I told you I'm not going to be a fan favorite when it says that the pastor took the side of the younger prodigal son. But my statement remains again. If the daddy can forgive him, why can't the church? And, and so this younger son, he says, if you ought to pity anybody, you ought to pity my brother. Because at least I tried to take my wealth that I have now. Let, let me tell you the beauty and the revelation of what I received now. Give me those strings. The beauty... Reverend West, let me break this down. The beauty of this text, the pericope of it, the biblical principle of it. Remember, this was not just a Bible story. This was a parable. And the beauty of this parable is that we can see it today. And I was told in theology seminary school where I am now going after my doctorate of ministry in apologetics and theology. I thank God I showed my mama and everything the other day. I've been accepted into the university. And as I continue my studies in apologetics and theology, I learned that one thing you can do with a text is that you can flip it and see it from different angles. That's why the Bible would never get old. Many books may sit on your shelf that have gotten old that you won't pick up and read, but you will always result back to go into the Bible. And lately I've been preaching the story about the prodigal son and shunning him. And the oldest boy is always celebrated in every pulpit every time this message is preached. But today I stop and I flip the text in an angle. And the angle I flip the text, I say that I celebrate the younger son. 
Because he has the audacity to say, why my daddy is alive? This is a revelation I receive even now. Why my daddy is still on the throne? I can fail, fall into the basement and get back up. Because the father was still alive and most people understand that the inheritance was due to both of the sons. One asked for it, but both got it. But the way I see the text, the way I see the celebra celebratory moment of the young son's life is that he steps out and he goes and he, go, he goes after it, whatever it was for him. It wasn't more wealth. It was control of what was his. And you got to say, you know, well, even if I fail, I'm going to take control of what's mine. What God got for me is mine. I may fail at holding this, but as long as I try, the pity today is not on the younger son. I pity today the elder son. Because he sat back and he, if his father was to die, he never stepped out to see if he can be the eldest brother that, that he needed to be for the younger son. The eldest boy sat back as long as he ate off the father, he was all right. But sometimes you have to prepare for the inevitables. That's why God told Abraham, he said, go out of the place where you're familiar, where you're comfortable. Go into a foreign country. How can we want God to enlarge our territory when we want to stay in our comfortability? He says, he said, get up and go after it. Take your risk. If I got to feed the swine, Paul said it like this, if I wound up in jail or in prison or dead, How bad do you want it? Ask your neighbor, how bad do you want it? That, that's what I came to preach today. How bad do you want it? You know, my, my mother, I'm going to share this quick story. I am planning my trip after today. I'm, I'm planning my trip this coming week to Africa for the very first time. In two years, I've had a had a ministry built in Africa for two years, sent resources to Africa for two years, and have never visited Africa. And they asked me, they said, who are you going with? Who are you coming with? And I said, I'm not coming with nobody but by myself. And I was contemplating, should I go? Should I not go? Should I go? Should I not go? My mama said about the disease and stuff that, that may go on, the monkey pox and all that other stuff. You know what I said? I said, how can I ask God? To take me eyes, the places eyes have not seen and ears have not heard if I don't just take the risk. I'm pleased today to tell them, no, the story won't be as an excuse as to why I can't make it. From the 19th to the 26th, I will be in West Africa, Ghana. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. I want you to go after the dream. Go after the degree. Go after the healing. I know they, they shut the door and say there's nothing we can do. But we serve a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly Amen. above all we can act or think according to the power that's at work within us. One of my favorite scriptures says it like this. For that thing 4.13, I can do all things. Can y'all say that? Can y'all help me preach that? Can y'all say that real quick? I can what? Through who? That strengthens me. I believe right now in your weakness. I believe right now we're made perfect in our what? Weakness. Look, look what happens. That, that's not the end of the story. I, I preach part of the text. I'm done right here. We got, we got communion to serve. But let me, let me tell you this. The Bible says that the younger son returned back home. And he says, you know, after he spent all of his substance, as he lost his dignity, he lost his self-esteem. The 
Bible says he returns back home. And the good news I want to tell you today is just like the prodigal son father. That God can see you from a distance. The Bible says he saw him, the Bible says like that, from afar off. And it would have says, far off he saw him. And he tells his elder son to go and get me. He, he sat down and he, the, the elder son had to be confused. Well, he left and I stayed. I celebrated him because he tried. He received him back. And I want you to know if you have wandered today, if you wandered away today, if you, if, if you, if you have, if you, if you have stepped out and you say, you know what, I'm not trying this church thing no more. I'm not trying this God thing no more. It ain't working. Today I call you to come back home because God will receive you as if you've never left. He'll receive you like you never left. You, you can get saved today. You can get saved today. You can join FEMINC Church right now. Yes, you can. Right now. You can join us right now. We are part of a global community. We are connected. And, that, and, and all that is necessary for you to do right now is for you to go to www.fmincchurch forward slash connect. Can you put that digital connect card up so they can see it on their TVs, they can see it on their social medias. You can fill out that digital connect card right now on www.fmincchurch forward slash connect. I, I love that song, Brother David's playing. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me those words that would encourage Would you sign up there right now? Would you give your life over to Christ? Digitally, you can become connected to our ministry and know what it is that God has given us because morning by morning, new mercies we're seeing. This church is seeing new mercies. You're under an imperfect pastor. But we serve a perfect God. I want you to get saved today. I want you to give your life to God today. I want you to join this ministry. I pray that you were blessed by today, by being here today, by being online today, by showing up today. It's rainy, it's gloomy. But this is a time that every believer has a moment, has a reason to rejoice that because when the world stays on the inside, the, 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 the church, our light is seen on every corner, every community. Why? Wow, the Bible says, also let your light shine. You should not feel gloomy. You should feel a rejoiceful moment in your life. You, you should feel like this is the moment I shall rejoice. Because I got light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. To whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I want you to join this ministry. I pray that you were blessed today. I'm glad to be able to be connected to you. I'm thankful to God that while everything seems uncertain, God has still given us a portal. Come on, can you clap your hands that while everything seems to be failing and uncertain, God has given us a portal to worship and to come together. The Bible says two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing, and I'm touching you. I'm connected to you right now. I'm touching you. I know that you're watching from your home. I know that you're in the living room. I know that some of you are in the workstation, wherever you may be right now. I am connected to you. I am connected to you. I'm touching you right now. I'm connected to you in the spirit. I want you to share this broadcast, this live stream, this image, this imaging with somebody, three of your closest friends and two or three of your closest family members. I want them to be empowered today. I want them to be encouraged today, uplifted in their spirits today. I'm ready to go, but before I do, I, I want to pray for you. Before I go today, I want to pray for you. I see, amen. I see you in the comments. God bless you. I will forever be connected to you. God bless you. Thank you so much. I see you. Amen. Thank you so much for those that make it those comments. I will forever be connected to you. Amen. I'm getting ready to go, but before I do, would you prayerfully consider sowing to this ministry we have to go we got communion to do today but would you prayerfully consider sowing and giving i ask you to use your cell phone today use your cell phone to text to give you can text fmnc to the number 73256 you can do that right now text fmnc the dollar amount that you want to give to that number f-e-m-i-n-c 
or you can just type in www.femic.church forward slash give. You'll be able to give right on our website, but I ask that you would please give. I ask that you would please give. Seven of you today, I ask that you make a sacrificial offering today of $100. I'm looking for seven of you, 70 of you rather today, to give a seed gift of $100. God bless you. For God loves what? A cheerful giver. Amen. I'm looking at you. Can you do it real quickly, fast in the comments? I want you to type, I am one of the 70 that's going to sow that seed of $100 today. Come on, if you were blessed today, I want you to do it. Amen. I'm praying for you to do it. Even while things are seeming to erode and fall apart, I don't want you to, I don't want you or your faith to waver. Amen. I don't want you or your faith to waver. I, I don't want you, I don't want it to shake you. I don't want your problems to shake you. I don't want your circumstance to shake you. I don't want your money issues to shake you today. I need you to tithe today. I need, you, I need 70 of you right now, 70 of you to sow a seed of $100. Your hand right now, give it to God and sow right now. Your hand, I see you. 100 of you, 70 of you rather, giving $100 today. I see you. Amen. I'm sorry to confuse you. I see you. Amen. 70 of you are sowing a $100 seed today. Those that are tagging your friends down the comments, I see you. I acknowledge you right now. Those that are watching, amen, from YouTube, I celebrate you right now. From Facebook, amen, from Twitter, God bless you. From Instagram, I celebrate you. Online, www. Church. those that are watching from our online portal, those that are watching from your televisions, thank you so much. I acknowledge you even now. It is my prayer that when the service is over that you will rate this service today so that more people can be able to locate us. Amen. www.fmic.church. Can you type that in the comment section so that they can have that to give? I need seven of you to give that $100 C. Get it in your hand right now. Today I'm doing so much on your behalf in the name of the body of Christ called church. Amen. And I can't do it without your help. These are so many needs. There are so many needs that we are church as are fulfilling. Amen. But I can't do it without you. We are fulfilling so many needs that we're trying to address domestic domestically and globally as well. Amen. We are doing so much as a church domestically and globally as well. I want to say it again that we are doing so much amen domestically and globally and just because i don't stand across the pulpit and share it amen every time i get on the pulpit like most pastors and most preachers i know this ministry is very effective and we are doing so much domestically and globally i can't wait i can't wait amen thank you so much amen i, I cannot wait i can't wait amen we have a whole schedule Amen. We have a whole schedule. And when I go to Africa, it's no vacation. This coming week, it is no vacation. I want you to know it is no vacation. We have a whole itinerary set. Amen. A whole itinerary set. Amen. That will take place. I want to share just a bit with you what we're going to do before we go to communion. Amen. Amen. On the, on the 19th is the arrival. On the 20th, it is the tour. The 21st, we'll be feeding and doing the outreach. Amen. On the 22nd, we'll be doing the Cape Coast tour. Amen. We'll be doing the experience on the 23rd. We'll be doing the program on the 24th. Sunday service and Banjo, Bo Bojo Beach on the 25th. Amen. God bless you. So it's all that in order right now. I have the whole itinerary of what we'll be doing. Amen. In Africa. Amen. On this coming week. I thank God for all of you. We have so much that we're doing globally and domestically. And I want you to give. I can't do it without you. God is going to raise our banner high to be a landmark, a flagship church. Somebody say a flagship church. I believe that we're going to become a flagship church. I'm going to say it again. It may not look like it. It may not look like it. But I promise you that God, see, you're not in, you're not in the communication with me and God. Me and God is having a conversation. And he promised me. He said this is going to become a flagship church. Amen. The rest of the body of Christ, a model to the rest of the body of Christ. And I can't do it without you. I want a generation to see God through a fresh set of eyes. And I cannot do it without you. I see you in the comments. Would you type, I am one of the one, uh, one of the 70. Amen. One of the 70 to give. Amen. We get ready to go into communion. But before I ever stepped on this camera, I want you to know I wanted to be the first person. Amen. The first person to give because I believe in being a leader, leading by example. Seven of you right now will sow that $100 seed. I make a declaration to you and over you today that your dreams are protected. Somebody say, my dreams are protected. Come on, y'all got to speak to me. My dreams are protected. And God is doing the impossible work in my life. Come on, you're not talking to me. My dreams are protected. And God is doing the impossible work in my life. Amen. 
Man, you will not break in this season because the devil has no other choice but to respect your boundaries. Amen. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. You will not break in this season. Somebody say, I will not break in this season. Amen. The devil tried all he can do to break you, but you will not break in this season. Amen. Amen. The devil has to respect your boundaries. Amen. This is a declaration a lot of us need to make because some of us feel like we are on a, at a breaking point at the end of our proverbial rope. Others may feel drained, but God, the God we serve, amen, he leaves no one hanging. Amen. I remember the story, the story of the 99 sheep, and he left all 99 to go after the one. Amen. He leaves none hanging. Seven of you grab that $100 seat and declare, I will not break. Isaiah 43 and 2. When you pass through the waters... He says, I will be with you. Thank you, Sister Tanya. I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep you over. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Just declare with me, I will not break. Amen. Uh, some of you are afraid to trust God, but, the, but make this your testimony. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. Come on, y'all. I see y'all in the comments. They're, they're saying it. They're saying it. Amen. I see them saying it in the comments. Say it one more time, y'all. I am no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. As you sow that seed today, this declaration, I'm chosen by God. Say it, y'all. Call for purpose. I'm victorious through Christ Jesus. Let me say real quickly, yesterday morning about 4 a.m., I received an unexpected text message from a brother in ministry who is not in this state. Amen. And I say these words verbatim that he said to me. He said, he said, challenge the people tomorrow in their giving. He said, I heard rebirth and new birth. September is a month of power and new beginnings. Debt relief. Whether it be from stimulus or just hard work, September is a month of new energies and refocus. I truly believe it. I believe that there is someone that can sow today, a business owner today that can sow a seed of $500. I believe somebody can sow a seed of $1,000. I just believe that God can do anything. Amen. I believe he can do anything. You're walking into a season of unprecedented opportunities in favor. When God has a message, he will use anybody. And I challenge you today to give. The website is on the screen, www. FEMINC.church. We'll get ready to switch, switch into communion real quickly. While we're switching, I want you to prepare yourself right now. Prepare your hearts. Amen. For communion. God bless you. Say, so reach us to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes. It's the blood that gives me strength oh, from day to day. It will never lose its power. You all ready? Come on, let's go. It reaches. Come on, everybody say it reaches. It reaches. Come on, y'all, to the high. To the highest. That's right, that's right. And it flows. Everybody say it with me. And it flows. Come on. And it flows to the low. To the low. Is valley. Tell somebody, say, Oh, yes. Tell somebody, it's the blood. Come on. That gives me from day. It will never. Can I do that one more time? I just want to tell like this. Come on. Set it reaches. <laughs> I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. To the high, yes, mountain. Come on, y'all. Say it flows. And it flows. Come on, y'all. To the Lord. 
Have you ever been in the valley? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> it's the blood that gives me strength. Oh, from day. It will never. It will never. Oh, it will never. Come on, can you say it with your heart? It will never. Burn loose. It will never. Yes. God bless you. The Holy Communion, known also as the Lord's Supper, it represents the greatest. Everybody shout the greatest. It represents the greatest, the greatest expression of God's love for all of his people. The Holy Communion, known also as the Lord's Supper, it is not only the greatest, it is, watch this, it is an ordinance of the church. Amen. Two items are used in the Holy Communion. It is the bread. It is the bread that represents Jesus' body that was scourged and broken before and during his crucifixion. And it was then the cup. It was the cup that represents his shed blood. If you have that in your possession, would you please type amen, I am ready for communion. Come on, everybody. It's the blood that gives me strength from day. It will never. It will never. It will never. If you guys are ready, if you guys are ready, would you type? I am ready for Holy Communion. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I am waiting on you. I don't want to omit anybody. I don't want to omit anybody. We come together once a month on the second Sunday of the month, and I don't want to omit omit anyone. I want to make sure everybody is a part of the fellowship today. Amen. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Amen. Testing one, two. Thank you so much. 
Amen. Thank God for Minister Josh. Would you clap your hands for Minister Josh, all that he does? Come on, y'all. I said clap your hands. Clap your hands. Amen. I'm going to ask Minister Josh that he will come and he will pray. He will give us a prayer. Amen. Before we continue, he will pray. Amen. That God will take these that are in our possession, he will take them from a common use and he will turn them into a spiritual use. Make sure you have your bread. Amen. That represents the body of Jesus. Amen. And then you have the cup. Amen. Which represents the blood of Jesus. Amen. He says, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. I want to make a confession. Amen. This is real, real wine up here. Amen. And I want to make sure if I get dizzy and pass out. Amen. It's because we decided to go with the real thing today. Amen. The real thing today. Amen. I am not getting drunk in the spirit. It's just a pinch. Amen. I am not getting drunk. It's just a pinch. Amen. But I want to let you know. Amen. I want you to know. Amen. Uh, all right. Minister Josh is coming real quickly. God bless you. Master, in the name of Jesus, we come to you to say thank you, O God. We thank you, O God, for who you are, being a mighty and awesome God that you are. Thank you, O God, for sending your only big son, begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, on the cross for our sins, for the remission of our sins, Lord God. We thank you, O God, for this day, for this time and this moment, our opportunity to take these items, Lord God, and do it in the remembrance of you, O God. We ask in the name of Jesus to turn it from a natural use to a spiritual use, Lord God. Help us to remember every day, not only on this day, but every day what you have done for us on Calvary. We thank you, Lord God, that you cleanse us and purify us for our many sins and transgressions that we have committed, Lord God. Wash us, cleanse us, Lord God, physically, mentally, and spiritually, Lord God. We thank you, God, for your forgiving mercy. We honor you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. So, Josh, thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Somebody said it was one of the receptacles they said was they amen they said was they was it real wine in those <laughs> amen no not in those amen not in those amen god bless you come on y'all it's a simple song holy 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 lord in the morning. Leander. I want everybody to say holy, holy, holy. Come on, bless it. Can we do that one more time? Come on, y'all. Holy, holy, holy. Holy. Merciful and mighty. See for and God in three persons. God in Blessed Trinity. Can we do that verse one more time? Holy, holy, holy. Come on, y'all. He's merciful and mighty. See for and God in three persons. God in Sons, blessed. Besides being born again in Christ, a healthy body and mind are the greatest blessings that any one of us could ever have. Would you take a moment and give God thanks for the blessings of your health and your mind? Come on, can you praise Him for it? Amen. 
And the Holy Communion is God's ordained channel of healing and of wholeness. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, Jesus ate his last supper along with his disciples. And knowing what he would accomplish through his sacrifice, he instituted the Holy Communion in Luke's Gospel, the 22nd chapter, in the 19th verse. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 24 through 25, his loving instructions for us were are to what? Remember. Remember him as we partake in the Holy Communion. Jesus wanted us conscious of how his body was broken for our wholeness and his blood was shed for the remissions and the forgiveness of our sins. And whenever we partake in this consciousness, we do proclaim the Lord's death till he come again, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Today we partake of that bread. We are declaring that Jesus' health and divine life flows throughout our mortal bodies. And when we partake of that cup, we are too declaring that we are forgiven and have been made righteous with God. Jesus' blood gives us right standing before God, and we can go boldly into his presence according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16. When we pray, we can pray and be sure that God hears us when we pray. To partake of the Holy Communion with me, I want you to hold that bread in your hand. Hold that bread in your hand. And I want you to say along with me as you hold that bread in your hand. God bless you. Remember on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. God bless you. I want you to hold that bread in your hand. Say, thank you, Father, for the gift of your son. By the stripes that fell on his back, my body is healed from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. Every cell, every organ, every function of my body is healed. It's restored. It's renewed. It's energized. In Jesus' name, I believe and I receive. Let us eat that bread together. Y'all hear that? He's ministering to us today, right? On the cross just to save himself. He decided. Tell somebody he decided. Somebody say he would, he would not come down from the cross just to himself. But he decided, tell somebody he decided, he decided. The cross said, He saved you and me. We hold that cup in our hand real quickly. Take that cup with me in your hand. God bless you. It is a, it would be a good Sunday, God bless you, to go through some old hymnals. Some old hymnals. Amen. I still feel the presence of God when I sing a hymnal. Amen. It's good to know those hymnals because it gets you back to that close place with God. Amen. Amen. I remember in the car just this past week, I was listening to the song of consecration that my father and my mother would listen to in the house when I was a kid. And to this day, that song still brings tears to my eyes. Amen. The song of consecration. God bless you. Let's take that cup in our hands and I want you to say with me, Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood. You're sin free, disease free, poverty free. Life is in your blood, and your shed blood has removed every sin and stain from my life. Through your blood, I am forgiven of all of my sins and transgressions, past, present, 
and should there be future. And I am made completely righteous. Today I celebrate. Can y'all say it like y'all mean? Today I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which is preservation, healing, wholeness, and provision. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me, for looking beyond my faults and seeing me at my need. Amen. Let us drink together. Amen. 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 If you're blessed, tape. Amen. I am blessed. Before we go, I want to shout out, allow you to shout out, allow me the moment to shout out all of you. I hope you will not just let me pray for you, but you will let me pray for your entire family. I want you to do me a favor, bring your entire family in one room real quickly. Do it quickly right now. Bring your whole entire family in one room, in one place right now. I want your entire family together. But before I pray for you, Tell me where you're watching from. Drop that city, state, town, or country. I want to know where the Lord's blessings are coming from and where they're going to. Would you do that for me real quickly? God bless you. Would you do that for me real quickly? Amen. God bless you. Bring your whole entire family in the room. Amen. Amen. They still shout and they blessed. Amen. Baltimore is in the building. God bless you, Baltimore. Baltimore again is in the building. Maryland, God bless you. Brooklyn, New York. Thank you so much. New Orleans, Louisiana. North Carolina is in the building. God bless you. Amen. Dallas, Texas is in the building. Connecticut is in the building. New Jersey is in the building. Amen. God bless you. Charlotte, North Carolina is in the building. Baltimore again. Newport News, Virginia. Jamaica is in the building. Baltimore. Amen. Glenn Arden, Mar Maryland is in the building. Thank you so much. Minnesota is in the building. North Carolina, Jamaica again. Woodbridge, Virginia is in the building. Mississippi is in the building. Baltimore again. I love you, Baltimore. Philadelphia is in the building. Amen. Queens, New York is in the building. Jamaica is in the building. I'm blessed. Ohio, Cleveland is in the building. West Melbourne, Florida is in the building. Building Kenya is in the building. Building, God bless you, New Orleans, Louisiana, Las Vegas, Nevada, Charlotte, North Carolina. Argentina is in the building. Clap your hands. Amen. God bless you. Louisiana, Kenya again is in the building. Detroit is in the building. Amen. Milwaukee is in the building. Houston, Texas is in the building. Guyana is in the building. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. God bless all of his children. Amen. The 504 is in the building. Barbados is in the building. Thank you so much. Los Angeles. India is in the building. Clap your hands for India. Columbia, Maryland is in the building. My sister, God bless you. Connecticut is in the building. Trinidad and Tobago is in the building. Richmond, Virginia is in the building. Los Angeles, California is in the building. Amen. Southside, Chicago is in the building. Atlanta, Georgia is in the building. Florida, amen. I am blessed. Ireland, Empire. It, I'm sorry. England, Empire, California is in the building. God bless Jamaica. Trinidad again. San Bardino, California is in the building. God bless all of his children. Jamaica, thank you so much. Dallas, thank you so much. I love you. Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. I love you. Chicago, shot town. God bless you. Louisiana, all of God's children. Houston, God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Let us go home. I want to pray for you. Amen. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Let us pray for now. St. Louis, Missouri, God bless you. Worldwide, that's right, worldwide, God bless you. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I love you as well. God bless you, amen. Let us pray together. Florida, let's please pray together. United Kingdom is in the building. Thank you, United Kingdom. Thank you so much. Baltimore, love you. I see you, I see you, I see you, I see you. Orlando, Arkansas is in the building. Thank you so much, amen. Expansion is what they're saying, expansion. We are gonna continue. We are climbing Jacob's ladder, amen. Massachusetts is in the building. Boston is in the building. Thank you so much. South Africa is in the building. Washington, D.C. Thank you. Let Montgomery, Alabama. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Everybody, while you're still typing that city, state, town, or country, as I pray, I want you to pray. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's pray, Lord Jesus, good and gracious God, I pray that you will bless these individuals in apartments, in nursing homes, in townhomes, in condominiums, wherever they may be, single families and shared space. I pray that you will bless them 
and set boundaries to everything for everything that the adversary is able to do to their minds. I pray, O oh God, that you will set the boundary. O oh God, that no evil will come near them. A thousand shall fall at outside of ten thousand at our right hand, but no evil shall come near us. We declare it in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you would draw us close, draw us closer in this looming time. I pray, God, that you will cause us to be salt to the earth. God, I pray, oh God, that you'll strengthen us where we're weak, lift us where we've been torn down. God, where the devil tried to break us, put us back together again. God, we pray that you will be a hedge fence of protection all around us. God, I pray, oh God, that you'll, that you'll go before us, oh God, make crooked places straight. God, I pray, oh God, to forgive us of all of our many sins and transgressions. God, we pray that our shortcomings, our errors would not rob us of seeing our promise or walking into our promise and our destinies. God, we pray, God, the matchless name of Jesus, that you restore families today. Refocus us today. God, we pray, oh God, that whatever we do, whatever decisions we have to make, that we always consult with you first. And that, God, you will go before us, oh God, and that whatever we don't understand, you will make understanding clear to us. And that we would trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge you believe in, oh God, that you will direct our prayer. Even when we feel like we are losing ourselves, I pray, oh God, that we will feel your presence. When we get overwhelmed and we feel, oh God, that we have no other place to go, we pray, God, that you lead us now to a rock. Lead us to a rock that is higher than all of us. Upon this rock, you said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We stand on that promise today. We believe you today. God, we trust you today. We trust that you have precious, great promises for our life. That's what we stand on. It's in Jesus' name we pray. All of God's children said together, amen. They will go out on the Mount of Olives after they will take communion and they will sing a hymn. We don't have a Mount of Olives, but we do have a hymn. No, it's a simple song. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Come on, we all know that song. One day, Jesus, and I know, come on, come on y'all, I know it was the blood, I know it, say I know, say, come on y'all, get that tambourine going, Jesus, I know, This is the part I like right here. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side. They pierced him in his side for you and me. Hey, one day when I was lost. One day when I was lost. Jesus, come on, y'all. And I know. Can we stand on our feet and sing that song together? I know it was the blood. I know. Come on, y'all. I know. The same. Come on, one day. Day when I was lost. Jesus. And I know. This is my favorite part right here. He never said, he never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word. Hey, he never said a mumbling word. For you and me, come on, y'all say one day when I was lost, my Jesus died, and I know. I want everybody who's in the comments say, I just know. One more time, say, I know it was the blood. Say, I know. Say, I know. Come on, y'all say, one day when I was lost. Jesus died and I know come on y'all tell the world that may not know they pierced him in the side come on y'all they pierced him y'all sound good come on for you and me one day when I was lost my Jesus come on y'all and I know. One more time, tell somebody he never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word. 
He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word for you and me. Hey, one day when I was lost, my Jesus, I know. And this is what I want to tell somebody right there. Come on. I said, come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Come on, y'all. Cast your poor souls at the Savior's feet. Tell them plunge and plunge in today and be made complete. And we're singing. Y'all ready? Come on. I'm singing. That precious name singing. Come on, y'all. Bless that wonderful name that was the. And we're singing. One more time. Let's do it again. Say, I'm singing. That precious name singing. Come on, y'all. Say, bless that wonderful name there. Wild up. And we're singing, Lord, read you. Say, I know it was the blood. Hey, I, we going home, y'all. I know. Say, one day when I'm alone, my Jesus died, and I know. Come on, y'all. They pierced him in the side. They. Come on. I know. Last one, y'all. He never said a mumbling word. He never said, for you and me, we going home right here. One day when I was long, you will be blessed. We all are standing to our feet. You will be blessed when you come in. You will be blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant the enemies who rise up against you to be defeated. They will come at you from one direction but flee in seven. God bless you. The Lord will send blessings on you. You will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going out, blessed coming in. In Jesus' name we do pray. We at FMIC, we believe in embracing the rejected. Can y'all say it with me, y'all? Encouraging the lost, empowering the unsaved, and loving the broken. We believe that loyalty is key and that only, can we put a microphone out there so we can say that again? That is our mantra, amen. Whether the world loves us or hates us, that's our mantra. Can we put that out, that microphone out there? So we, can we say that again one more time? We at FMIC, we believe in embracing the rejected, encouraging the lost, empowering the unsaved, and loving the broken. We believe that loyalty is key and that only real love can be given to you by God. We are encouraged, we are encouraged, we are encouraged to start our days with God, to go with God, and to do as God right here at FMIC Church. Now may the grace and the peace and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit will it rest, rule, and abide His will right now and forevermore. And the people of God back at home, help me sing it together. Lift your voice and sing. Say amen, amen. Say ah. Come on, y'all. Everybody, come on. Lift your voice and sing. Say amen, amen. Amen. Say ah. All hands are lifted. Last time for the Holy Ghost. Come on, everybody. 
Lift your voice and sing. Say amen, amen, amen. Say amen. Listen, beloved, I love you so much. I love you so much from the very bottom of my heart. Thank you for taking the time, the moment to share with us in this awesome communion service. I pray that you are blessed. Remember, we are in a two week long series. Go after it. I look forward, I look forward to being with you again real soon. May God bless you, may his grace be upon you. It's my prayer. Go and be blessed today. Go and be blessed and know that God is with you. He promised to be with you even unto the end of the earth. I believe it. Go with it right now. Stay with it right now. Love God, he'll love you. Talk to God, he'll talk with you. Bless God and he'll bless you. It's in Jesus' name, I love you. God bless you and good night. God bless you, amen.